I'd like to spend a little time and investigate a line from Johann Sebastian Bach's first violin sonata from the Fugue. It's just a line I took out, transposed a little bit, and have put it now in two different keys. It's just a nice uh, little turnaround. Secondary dominant, going from D to E to A7 to D. If you've not yet done so, I'd ask that you do please subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the content. Like, share, leave a comment. If you'd care to make a tip, there's a PayPal link in the description below, and we're going to get to this line from Johann Sebastian Bach's Fugue in the Violin Sonata, first Violin Sonata. So we get a little D major line right off the bat. First inversion, F sharp and A, ninth and tenth fret of the fifth and second strings. F sharp and A, down to D and A at the tenth fret of the sixth and second strings. And we come off from the A to F sharp at the seventh fret of the second string. nice little major line. This is the kind of thing you can add to your vocabulary. Just the positional awareness of where it is on the board, that this is the third of the chord, this is the root of the chord. Now this is the part that caught my ear. This little part. So all of a sudden, the V chord, which is A7 in this key, gets its V. E major appears. And we get a little contra motion line that's really nice, almost like a ragtime line. So this is E and G sharp, 7 and 9, strings 5 and 2. use those notes. This is C-sharp with a G, frets 9 and 8. Pretty much you have to do it with your middle two fingers, because we're going to toggle and get that half step below. So here's C-sharp and G with an F-sharp. So G, F-sharp, G, E-sharp basically sliding up to D 10th or at uh, D and F sharp 10th and 11th fret interval of a 10th it's just a very tidy group of fingerings nice relationships in here we can move it up a fourth get much the same fingerings, just a few alterations. Here we're going to be doing G. Here's a B and a D at the 9th and 10th fret. So same fingering more or less. 9 and 10, coming down to G, the root, at the 10th fret of the 5th string. So 3rd and 3rd in the bass, root in the bass. Now here's a little A7 chord. So just two notes, A and C sharp, 7th and 9th fret of the 4th and 1st strings. And again, those middle two fingers, 9th and 8th fret of the 5th and 1st strings. And that's what he had. You can also play the chord tone to G. So instead of F sharp, C, B, C, leading tone uh, uh, or half step below the third of G, you can 
can have the whole step below. Or, so there I'm reaching up for a single A sharp there on the 11th fret of the second string. Up to G, 10 and 12, G and B. So two little uses for this line. From Johann Sebastian Bach. Again, it's from the Violin Sonata Number no. 1 from the Fugue, fairly early on. I just listen to these things and hear something that I like the motion of that has a beginning and an end that's concise, it's not too long. It's vocabulary that then we can integrate into our own playing and our own vision of the board, our own understanding of harmony. So this is one. 50551 five, is how I think of it. So one, in this case, D major. You could say two, but two would usually be minor in a even in keeping with the key. So this is really its reason for being here. That G sharp note is the making the case for the five of five. So in this instance, if I play D. Let's see if we can get it to modulate to A. So it took a couple of extra five ones of E7 to get A to sound like it was home. modulate it up a fifth if we want. And we're there. So I hope these sounds are pleasant for you. Let me know if you have questions or comments. I look forward to hearing from you as always. I wish you a very good day.